very good evening everybody meeting again in the session of philosophy and we have started discussing about stuart close philosophy in fact a big important philosophy in the homeopathy is stuart close in this book he tried to explain the concepts of homeopathy in relation with the modern science and he tried to explain everything with a materialistic as well as dynamic views both aspects and his own explanation regarding it the general pathology of homeopathy in this chapter he tried to explain the concepts of pathology according to the homeopathy modern pathology is only the superficial pathology dealing with the material aspect considering the tissue change considering the cellular change but the modern pathology never considers the cause behind it Modern pathology considered general pathology, special pathology with its two branches, the medical, internal one medical and external one surgical. And as they consider this pathology is the cause of the disease or disease itself. And they tries to remove that pathology. But homeopathy consider this is the end product of the disease. Cause lies inside. Cause lies at the dynamic level. Hanuman reached to them. With the help of his inductive reasoning, ultimately came out with the discovery of core causes of chronic diseases in the form of three myosomes, the psoriasis, syphilis. And he was the first person who started classifying the diseases into four varieties, specifically the chronic diseases into four types. The first variety to which he labeled by the name of occupational diseases or drug diseases. This is the first variety which he has mentioned. The second variety which Thereafter, after re removing those diseases from the, um, from the group, then whatever remains, then he worked hard, very hard and reached to one, find it out, one cause which, is relate, which was related to the sexually transmitted diseases and which was the big scourges of the disorders uh, in the past was the syphilis. And the, he found there was the suppressed syphilis either in the past or family history of the patient leading to form new diseases to which animal labeled by the name of syphilitic myosin. And ultimately he discovered the antisyphilitic remedies in the form of syphilinum, the Merxol, the Aurum Metallicum, etc. So this was the first important chronic myosin, chronic cause of chronic myosin, specifically in one eighth of cases of sexually transmitted diseases out of when it the 60 percent he got the cause of this suppressibility in the similar manner he started working out and he got one more thing suppressed gonorrhea either in the past or family history leading to form new internal diseases to which he labeled by the name of psychosis a terminology which was originally greek having the meaning pig ward disease and gonorrhea is associated with these pig wards pig wards are nothing but the Psychotic words, they are, these are the cauliflower-like growths, appears around genitals, associated with the gonorrhea. And because of which Hanuman chose the psychosis name to this myosin. Mm -hmm. Syphilis, as the disease itself, runs through the four phases, the primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary, ultimately ending with the death of the human being. And that's why Hanuman chose again the same name for his myosin, the syphilitic myosin. So, out of eight cases, one eighth he got the result, he got the cause, and both causes were venereal in origin. But one eighth cases, to seven eight cases still remaining to be um, unknown or still remaining to be um, a question mark for Hanimer what is the cause behind them? He was working with them again and again, and ultimately, for those cases, he got one cause which is not venereal it is non-venereal and it was suppressed skin eruption specifically it suppressed each either in the past or family history of the patient leading to form new internal diseases biggest reason for the, and biggest cause during Hanumanian era is the Sora so he labeled it by the name of Sora and today we have to learn regarding this cause on the page number 91 the second paragraph what he says there still remained a vast number of symptoms constituting the non-venereal diseases, acute and chronic, which afflict mankind. Those, these are the most part had been 
or were being classified in the most arbitrary and whimsical manner. So no one was no one has classified those. It was a big class which was remaining hidden. Hanuman labeled them by the name of Sura because he got one common theme. There was this history of suppressed skin eruption, specifically the scabies or each at that time, leading to form new diseases to which Hanuman labeled by the name of Sori disorder. And again, he has classified those diseases into two different categories, acute and chronic also. Classification and nomenclature was being changed constantly according to the varying opinions and theories of individuals none of whom were guided by any general principle. The situation was exactly that which confronted Cuvier in natural history and Linnaeus in botany. So these are two people. The Cuvier is the person who was there, classified the animal kingdom into four types. And Carl Linnaeus, who classified the botany, made the classification of plants into different types. Hanuman was at the same era and he considered just labeling the name or giving the name to the diseases doesn't help. Unless and until we classify them, it is not possible to understand the, them properly. Hanuman was the first one who started classifying the diseases. Into this wilderness of the conflicting names, theories and classifications, Hanuman began to blaze his way, guided by the compass of logic encased in the inductive method of Bacon. Hanuman was overwhelmed by the inductive reasoning of Lord Bacon. Only thing was, he has not ancient about it. But if you follow the Hanuman's life, you can find it out that throughout his life, the uh, this overwhelming experience of Lord Bacon's inductive reasoning found to be there in Hanuman's mind. He every time followed the inductive and deductive reasoning with all four the characteristics or criteria which inductive reasoning requires. That is the exact observation, the correct interpretation, the scientific construction and rational explanation. And throughout his, his life, he followed those four criteria. And that's why every experiment, every inference drawn by Hahnemann was based upon experimentation. It was quite easy for him to reach to that. Into his wilderness of conflicting names, theories and classifications, Hahnemann began to blaze his way, guided by the compass of logic encased in the inductive method of Lord Bacon. His, his search was now directed to the discovery of fundamental causes of non mineral diseases. Having found to that so large number of symptoms and diseases had venereal origin in syphilis and psychosis, it occurred to him that it might be possible to find common, general or primary cause for all or at least in a great part of the remaining symptoms of disease, thus to make the final generalization. To this end, he directed his efforts, rejecting ex existing classifications, searching collecting, comparing, grouping, similar and natural related symptoms in light of history, logic and experience, tracing the relations between similar diseases and their antecedents and tracing the recognized proximate causes to their antecedent causes. As far back as possible, he gradually narrowed the field of general causes, causation until he arrived at one primary cause, which accounted for and explained the greater part if not all, of the phenomena with which he was working. So he was working with the scientific method. He was comparing the diseases. He was finding it out what may be the cause. He was going back to find it out the history, what was wrong with the patient, and what is the common theme he was getting in all those things. That was the method he followed. Throughout, he was doing this big, big work. And it was really big. And he was searching with those failed cases again and again. What is common? What, what I'm missing? That was the question to the animal. And ultimately, he reached to one point where he got one common theme that there is a suppressed skin eruption, suppressed each in the past or family history of the patient and because of which new diseases have been aroused. To which ultimately he enabled by this Sora name. The determination of primary cause opened the way for the consistent reclassification of secondary causes 
and the correction of many errors of grouping and nomenclature of diseases. It obliterated at one stroke large number of fictitious diseases which were in really named reality named from nearly single symptom hydrocephalus, fever, diarrhea, hydrophobia, jaundice, diabetes, anemia, chlorosis, pyoria, otoria, catar, eczema, etc. All of which belong to the general class of infections. So these were the different different names given to it. This, this was the way of nomenclating the diseases during animal in time. Many, many diseases, they labeled by the name of one symptom, jaundice. Jaundice means yellowness of the skin. Hydrocephalus, there is a formation of accumulation of fluid in the brain. So, this made the animal to lead towards the confusion. You cannot understand what variety this disease goes unless and until you catch it properly. So, this is too important to understand. And that's why Hahnemann considered it is better to classify. He again went into the Cuvier's classification, considered how he classified the animal kingdom. And then he worked out with the diseases to follow it in the classification of diseases. And that's why what he says, as Cuvier works, work showed that the animal kingdom was built on four different structural plans. So, by singular coincidence, Hahnemann's work showed that diseases were built as it were on four different plans according as they arose from four different causes, namely the occupational or drug diseases. Second variety is syphilis, third is psychosis and fourth is sora. And this is accordingly as Hahnemann have found it out. This sequence is very important. He first classified one variety into occupational or drug diseases. Then he first found it out, the miasm was the syphilis. Second was the psychosis and lastly the sora. So this is very important thing which he has uh, introduced into the homeopathy. See, this thought should be there in your mind. Unless and until you get that thought, it is not possible to work hard. And he was really an industrious person who worked hard to go for it, to understand the thing. And that's why it was very easy for him to classify them. So he classified, first discovered myism is syphilis and later the psychosis and then the sora. Sora was not the first myism which was found. Because it was known, syphilis was known to the people. Sora was not known. Syphilis disease as it was known and it was well studied disease at that time. That's why it was very easily recognized. So, this was a big, big way Hahnemann came to the conclusion of classifying the diseases. And this classification he has explained in thorough over there. Next part comes relation of bacteriology to homeopathy and to Hanevan. That part we are going to start on Monday because it is a big thing which we, we must know. Everyone must know how Hanuman was the bacteriologist and that one must understand. This is too important and that's why we will not start and fin uh, uh, consider only one or two paragraph. Instead of that, we will start it on Monday session when we can learn a lot regarding the bacteriology and Hahnemann and how he was way ahead with the concept of bacteriology at that time. So I think that's all for today. We will stop over here and we will continue with it on Monday's lecture with the relationship of bacter bacteriology to homeopathy. So thank you being there. And we'll meet on Monday. Then I want to thumb both and then